Several months ago, Tony Seba of RethinkX uh, released a study arguing that the cost of wind, solar, and batteries was going to drop so low by 2030 that the marginal cost would essentially be zero. Now he's come up with another study arguing that existing power plants have the cost, uh, their cost per unit of electricity has actually been uh, miscalculated over the years. So we're going to talk to Tony about his study. Welcome to the interview. Thank you, Mark, and thank you for um, having me again. Well, Tony, I'm always uh, happy to have you on here because you, uh, you explode conventional thinking. You're a rethinker, as we've discussed before. So what are you rethinking in terms of the levelized cost of energy? Yeah, so um, levelized cost of energy, uh, LCOE, is one of the key metrics in energy. Um, and it's used essentially to make decisions about which power plant to build, new power plant to build. Um, so um, it compares, LCOE compares different, the cost of generation for different technologies, nuclear, gas, coal, hydro, and then make a decision as to uh, what to build based on several factors, but um, if you're in a market economy based on the lowest, uh, essentially LCOE. Um, what we found was that since 2010, the published LCOE estimates by essentially all um, mainstream analysts um, has been inaccurate by a lot. Um, so what is the issue? Uh, the issue is that they assume, so to calculate the LCOE, um, and so a new power plant uh, is estimated to last for about 20, 30, 40 years. Um, there is a number, utilization rate or capacity factor, which tells you what percent of the time of that year a power plant will be able to generate and sell electricity. So a capacity factor of 100% would mean that that power plant would uh, produce and generate uh, electricity every single hour of every single uh, day of, of the year. Um, if it generates 50% of the time, then its capacity factor would be 50%. Um, so far, so good. Um, when we went back, to look at the LCOE estimates from uh, mainstream analysts, what we found was a mistake uh, in capacity factor projections that meant that they were wildly underestimating the levelized cost of electricity. So if I understand this right, Tony, is, is that uh, if we're comparing the cost of wind, solar, and batteries to, say, hydro or, or gas, those will be the, the two big ones uh, probably after coal disappears. And they assume, let's say, uh, an analyst assumes that the LCOE of a gas plant is $0.10 cents per kilowatt hour. But they've miscalculated the capacity factor. That means that that cost could actually be $0.12, cents, could be $0.15, cents, could be $0.20. Cents but it's not the number that they came up with. And so they're making decisions about the future of power generation in the United States and Canada, wherever, based on inaccurate calculations. Have I got, that, have I got it correct? That's exactly right. So uh, for example, since 2010, um, the assumption for capacity factor for coal has been that if you start uh, coal plant this year, say 2010, 2015, 2020, um, the capacity factor that <clears throat> power plant will be able to sell, to produce and sell uh, electricity 85% of the time. The first year and 85% of the time, every year after that, forever, right? For the next 20, 30, 40 years. Um, so that's the assumption. And But when we went back to check what the capacity factor in the market was. So the reality was that coal, the coal fleet in the United States, so by the way, half of the whole coal fleet has shut down in the US over the last uh, 10 years. Um, the capacity factor 
has never been as high as 85% ever, right? So even in 2010, the capacity factor was close to 70%. And by 2020, it was 40%. So it was, it was never as high as what they were estimating. So not only that, coal is still in a free fall, um, as we know. Well, let's talk about the practical applications of, of this, Tony. So uh, if I'm a utility and I'm selling uh, my power for less than it costs me to produce it, wouldn't that show up in the utility book, uh, you know, their financial statements and, and have been a big red flag for, for analysts and investors? So there, there is a difference between, you know, the stock market for a coal company, for instance, um, and uh, utility. So in, in, uh, if you look at the US Dow Jones Coal Index, which measures directly um, the, um, you know, coal power plant, coal um, companies, um, it went down by 99% from 2010 to 2020, 99% essentially it disappeared. Um, but that is based on um, the rules and regulations that require that these companies uh, disclose information every day. So uh, investors in those stocks can make decisions every day based on the latest information. However, um, that doesn't happen in power plants. So, um, you know, the mainstream analysts have not updated actual <laughs> um, capacity factor numbers based on the data. So when a utility say pushes for a new gas plant or hydro or whatever, um, then they essentially say, look, these analysts are saying that hydro is five cents or gas is three and a half cents or whatever. Um, when the reality based on corrected LCOE based on actual market data um, would say that coal in 2020 was about four times higher based in reality than it was, you know, basically posted um, um, mainstream analyst reports. So again, getting back to the practical applications of this, it would seem like as we go forward, as the uh, economies become more electrified, push now in the U.S. by the Biden policies, but we have the same thing here in Canada, and of course, same thing in, Euro in Europe, there are going to be some hard choices about what kind of power generation to, to build and to invest in. Yeah. And what you're arguing, if I understand this correctly, Tony, is that natural gas and uh, uh, hydro uh, would be far, far more uh, expensive than wind, solar, and batteries. And uh, if you calculate these uh, numbers correctly, so we would need. To, so it's important to make the right investment decisions to get the best value when we yeah. build a power plant. Have I, have I got that correct? Yeah. So, so this is this is even, it gets even more interesting, Mark, and because even with inaccurate LCOEs for conventional generation the cost solar uh, and wind are already the cheapest sources of energy on the planet, period, right? Um, solar plus four hours of storage or wind plus four hours, which is called nearly firm power, is not only cheaper than any other form of conventional generation already. Based on inaccurate, inaccurate LCOEs, um, the cost of nearly firm solar power um, is lower than the operating costs of any conventional generation. Meaning even if you get the gas power plant for free, or even if you get the hydroelectric um, you know, infrastructure for free, just the maintenance and operations costs and fuel um, are higher than solar already, right? Even based on inaccurate LCOE. On top of that, um, in the previous report that we talked about before, um, we estimate that the cost of SWB will drop by about 70% over the next 10 years. So the cost of the cheapest sources of energy, solar and wind plus batteries, will drop by another 70%. It's obvious that SWB are going to eat everything else. Um, but what we found here is that the LCOEs that are published are wildly inaccurate so that today, SWB are even cheaper than what was previously thought. Um, so in the case of gas in 2020, when you correct the LCOE, gas is 60% higher than published reports. Coal is 
four times higher than published report. Wind, uh, I mean, um, hydroelectric um, is three times higher than reported. Um, so again, even with inaccurate, you're wildly lower than reality LCOEs, solar and wind and batteries are still cheaper, but the gap is widening by a lot when you correct for the LCOE of conventional generation. Final uh, question, Tony, and I'm gonna come back to what I asked earlier, which is in the real world, if analysts and utilities uh, are mm -hmm. underestimating the, uh, or they're miscalculating the LCOE, then would it not be the case that if the co cost of generating a unit, a kil say a megawatt hour right. of electricity is actually $70, let's say, instead of the 40 or 50 that the utility is charging for it, that that ought to appear as a loss someplace in a financial statement uh, and be uh, uh, you know, flagged by investors. Uh, how, is the, how is this all slipping beneath the unnoticed beneath the, uh, the scrutiny of the regulators and investors and so on. Yeah, so the magic of uh, essentially public utility commissions. Um, so we rate payers and taxpayers um, don't, don't have agency in choosing what power plants are going to uh, basically be launched. And so there are public utility commissions, regulators that make decisions on our behalf. And what happens with these new um, uh, power plant, conventional power plants, is that um, essentially um, captive ratepayers are on the hook. They are on the hook to pay for the 20, 30 year um, life of these coal, gas, and so on power plants, no matter what the future is. So we're on the hook, no matter what. So if they have to shut down those plants, which they will over the next 10 or 15 years, um, the utilities themselves don't lose, we lose, right? It's the ratepayers. So there is no market, right? Because you know the final pair um, is captive. Uh, somebody else makes a decision for us based on wrong, inaccurate LCOE calculations. Tony, thank you very much for this. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Cheers.